Okay, if we think about uh, dosing, so what? So it's like power and time, or are there other parameters? Um, how do you, when you're doing an experiment, how do you cal How do you, I guess, calculate what dose you will use? Uh, that's a terribly good question, and it's also an extremely demanding question mm -hmm. because with the red light research we have too many variables so we can't isolate one variable very easily on its own you have wavelength you have energy you have time mm -hmm. and you have time of day because your response to red light changes at different times of the day so how do we manage that well i don't have access to enough subjects to pull that one apart We've done a lot of experiments on animals. And what, we, what you find, in this is highly conserved in evolution. What you find in a fly, a bumblebee, or a human is exactly the same in terms of red light metrics. So we know that if you go below ooh, around one minute, one minute, 15 seconds is the break point. If you give red light at any energy below that time period, nothing will happen. And it's not like aspirin. Take five aspirin uh, and your headache will go away quicker than if you take one aspirin. Um, it is something that we now know is a switch. When you do something, you turn the switch that improves mitochondrial function. And that switch, once you've turned it, will last five days. Again, doesn't matter if you're a fly, a human, whatever. Now, physiologists find this very difficult because hmm. in physiology, there aren't a lot of switches. There are a lot of dose relation dose relationships. Mm -hmm. So when we've done work on aging people and aging eyes, and we've managed to improve vision, we say to people, three minutes in the morning. We know three minutes is an overkill completely. But then if you've got someone that tends to chisel things away, so you say to them, oh, it's a minute and 15 seconds, someone's going to do a minute someone's you know, someone's going to chisel it away um and so for that reason we've gone over the top and we say do it for three minutes now we when this originally when this scenario came out uh people had a fixed energy for using this and it was uh 40 uh milliwatts per centimeter squared bit bright mm. so what we did do is we started reducing that and still looking for an effect and so we had a project in Moorfields Eye Hospital where we took some people and we were just reduced the energy. And so we can now deliver an effective dose. Again, remember, it's a switch um, at a much lower energy and get a as good a physiological effect as if we give a high energy. So we can now deliver something that is very comfortable. And no one's going to we've, we've got clinical trials with young children. Uh, we've got trials with older people and they tolerate it very, very easily. It's we're down to about five milliwatts per centimeter squared, which is if you if you don't know what that looks like, it's a very it's a relatively dim bicycle light. Right. But it's not a bicycle light because the wavelength's longer. Um, but but that's what mm. we're really talking about. We're talking about something which, which is very comfortable. Interesting. Now, but this is for, this is for mitochondria. This is for helping mitochondria, right? Yeah. I mean, be, because people use red lights for inflammation and many other things, right? Which we won't talk about. But that may have a different dose response. With it may do. Um, now, red light for inflammation, hmm. we think has been has been well we know it's been used for ages vets use it uh, very regularly on racehorses uh, i spent a lot of time talking to vets at one point if you've got a very expensive racehorse you want to look after its muscles if you've got muscle strain then you really want to pay attention to it um i strongly suspect the metrics are very similar because what runs inflammation is mitochondria and mitochondria have a very very strong influence over inflammation so if we take an old animal an old let's say an old mouse 
the eye burns more energy than any other part of your body. Um, it ages faster than any other part of your body. And you start to get systemic inflammation in, in, in the back of the retina. When we give red light, to, which affects the mitochondria in the retina, inflammation goes down. It's very clear. Lots mm. of separate metrics we've used. The mitochondria, when they're unhappy, drive inflammation. When ATP production goes down, something called reactive oxygen species, ROS, goes mm -hmm. up. Now, ROS, we can think about ROS as, I think about mitochondria as a battery. When the battery is running well, it produces ATP. When the battery is not running very well, it produces more ROS. And that's like a battery leaking acid. And when it does that, inflammation starts to be driven. So we know red light reduces ROS, increases ATP. And we when we look at a whole range of inflammatory markers, they go down. Now, some go down a lot, some go down a little. But there is a fundamental relationship between light and mitochondria, and it doesn't matter what animal model you do it in, and I don't think it makes that much difference which tissue you use. If you use a tissue that doesn't have much in the way of mitochondria in it, a tendon, um, the effect is much more reduced. Right. Interesting. How did these people do it every day? You said that you said the effect lasted five days when they were doing the eye is it every day. Yeah, it lasts five days, no matter what you do. Um, we are at five days is a very, very difficult kind of concept to get over. If you're <laughs> saying to an elderly person, um, do this every five days, they lose track. Mm -hmm. They lose track. Now, was it a Monday when I did that last or was it a Tuesday? And is that five mm -hmm. days or four days or three days? Uh, we tend to say to people, just do it daily. Build it into your routine. There is absolutely no harm in doing it daily. But if you sit there and you do it daily and you sit in front of, you know, your red light for an hour, the whole thing falls apart. It's relatively ineffective. So you go past some point of efficiency. The best thing without any doubt is three minutes, build it into your life, you know, do it when you're making your coffee in the morning, when you're listening to the news, which people seem to do very, very easily. Do it daily if you can't remember what five days is. And look, you know, I'm I, I'm not young. I, I don't remember what five days is. So when I come into my office, um, I cycle to work, I get into work, I start changing out of my cycle gear and I just turn a big red light on that bounces light off a wall. And that is what I do. And there are a few days when I miss it um, for one reason or, or another, but I probably do it three days a week, you know. Hmm. And, and if, if, if you miss it, if you miss something, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's just got to be a bit of a pattern you build into your life.